Hey guys, welcome back to Office 365 Concepts. In today's video, we will dive into the fantastic world of OneDrive. We will explore the amazing features and benefits that OneDrive brings to the table, from secure storage and seamless file sharing to powerful document creation and collaboration. We have got it all covered. So let's dive in. OneDrive for Business is a cloud-based storage platform where you can upload your documents, you can share documents with others, and you can do collaboration with others. There are multiple cloud-based storage providers out there, but OneDrive for Business provides many features and benefits compared to other providers. When you store a file or a document in your computer, you need access to that computer every time you need that file. But when you store a document in OneDrive, you can access that document from anywhere. You just need an internet connection. And you can even use any device to access this file, be it a Windows device, Android device, iPad, or a Mac computer. If we talk about data storage, the files or folders or any data that you store in your OneDrive, that data is securely stored in Microsoft data centers. Microsoft data centers are designed for high availability. This ensures that data remains accessible even in the event of hardware failures or natural disasters. And when you access your data from OneDrive account, that data is protected using transport layer security encryption. So whether your data is at rest or it is in transit phase, your data is always secured. The other benefit of OneDrive for Business is document sharing and collaboration. Let's say you are working on a document and you need some inputs from your colleague. So you will probably write an email, attach the file and send it to him. But this will generate multiple copies of the same file. But if your file is stored on OneDrive, you can share that file with multiple people. So instead of working on multiple copies of the same file, all of them will work on the same version of the file. This is called co-authoring. The other feature of OneDrive for Business is online applications. If your files are stored in OneDrive, you do not need Office applications installed on your devices. You can use online applications to open or modify your documents, be it Word document, PowerPoint, or Excel. All these applications are available in your OneDrive account. The next benefit of OneDrive for Business is storage. Depending on your subscription, you can get one terabyte of OneDrive storage, where you can store your files, documents, photos, videos, and other type of documents. You can even extend your storage for five terabyte or even 25 terabyte, which is a lot more storage space provided for one single OneDrive account. So without wasting any time, let's explore OneDrive for business. To access your OneDrive account, go to portal.office.com, sign in with your credentials, and then go to OneDrive. You just need to make sure that your administrator has assigned a supported license to your account so that you can access OneDrive. On the home page, you will see the documents that you have recently modified in OneDrive. No matter you have created these documents or someone has shared these documents with you, whatever documents you modify in your OneDrive account, you will see them on the home page. You can see name of the document, date and time or day and time when you modified this document. You can see the owner of the document and you will see the activity those are done on the document as well. On the left, we can see my files. Here you will see all the files that you have created in your OneDrive account. You can see name of the document. You can see when did you last modify this file. Now there is a catch. If this file is created by me and I modified this file, then the modified by will show my name. But if this file is shared with someone and that person modifies that file from his OneDrive account, then you will see the name of that person. For example, you can see here, this particular Word document is shared by John Smith to Concept user. Concept user modified this document from his OneDrive account and the modified by shows Concept user. Now, if John will modify this document, this will show John's name. We will talk about document sharing and co-authoring in few minutes, so these concepts will be more clear. You can also see the size of the file. You can see if the document is shared with someone or not. If sharing says private, that means this document is not shared with anyone, and this is your personal document. And then you can see the last activity that was done on a particular document. If you want, you can also sort your documents. You can click on sort, and here you can sort the documents based on their file type, 
basis on their name, modified date, modified by, basis on the file size. You can sort them in the ascending order or in descending order. You can also change the view of your documents. If you click on this drop down arrow, you can select compact list that will remove the blank space to make the view compact or you can go back and you can select tiles. You can also see the information about the documents. For example, if I select a document and go to info, I can see preview of the document here. I can see which users have access to this document apart from me. I can see activities. Those are done on this document recently or in the past. We can see who did the activity. You can see the modified date and time. You can see type of the file. You can see path of the file where this file is stored and you can see the size of the file. If you want to create a new document or you want to create a new folder in OneDrive, you will click add new. From here, you can create a folder. You can upload files. You can upload folders in your OneDrive account. You can create Word document, Excel workbook and other type of documents. So first, let's create a folder. You will click folder here. You can give it a name. And from here, you can select a color code for this folder. So for example, I select this color and click create. So you can see here the folder is created and you can see the color as well that I selected while creating this folder. So same way, if I want to create a word document, I'll click word document. This will open online word application in the web browser. Now I can create this document. For example, this is a test document and I'll simply close it. And here you can see this document is created. Now let's say if I want to rename this folder, so I'll right click and then I'll go to rename and here I'll give it a name. For example, test doc and click rename. Now this document is renamed. And if I open this document, I can see that I have written here. This is a test document. So in online web application, you don't have to press control S. You don't have to save the document. This will be saved automatically. Same way I can create other type of files. For example, I can create Excel workbook. So this will open Excel online and here I can type anything in rows and columns. And I will simply close it so we can see the Excel file is created. If I want to rename this, I can give it a name here. For example, test Excel file and click rename. And if I open it, I can see the data as well. So let's close it and same way you can create other type of documents by clicking add new. Now, if you select a document, you can see a few options here or you can simply click on these three dots next to the document and you can see these option here as well. So let's talk about these options one by one. If you want to open this document, you can click on this file or you can go to open and you can either select open in browser or open in app. Now, if you want to open this document in Word online or Excel online, you will click open in browser and your document will be opened in Excel online application. Now, let's say you do not have office desktop applications installed on your computer. So you can open your documents in online version of office applications. These online applications are built in applications in OneDrive account. And if you want to open this document in Excel desktop application, you will go to open and you will select open in application. If you will have Excel application installed on your computer, then this file will be opened in desktop version of Excel. Next is preview. If you want to preview this document, you will click preview. This will show a preview of this document. You can share this document with others. You can copy the link of this online document and you can share it with others. You can even download this file to your computer. And if you want, you can open this file in Excel online version or in desktop Excel application on your computer. The next option is share. You can also share your documents with others. For example, if you are working on a report or a document and you need some suggestions from your colleagues on that report, so you will select the document. You can go to share or you can simply click share here. Now from here, you can manage the sharing permissions. 
For example, if you want to share a document with others in read only mode or you want them to edit the document or you can let them to comment on the documents. So let's talk about these settings in detail. To see all the sharing permissions, you will click settings icon. So first it will ask you with whom you want to share this document. First option is anyone. If you select anyone, then whosoever will receive this link can open this document. Even he can forward this document to others. So you can simply select anyone and share the link with anyone you want and he will be able to open this document. Next is people in Office 365 concepts. Here Office 365 concepts is the name of my tenant. For your case, it will show the name of your tenant. So this option means you can share the document with anyone within your tenant. Either you can share the link with them or you can forward an email to them along with the link. They can open the document. Next is people with existing access. Let's say you have already shared this file with someone, but somehow he has lost the URL or the link of that particular document. So you can select this option people with existing access and this will automatically share a new link to the people those already have access to this document and the next is people you choose if you want to share a document with some particular colleagues or people you can select this option next you can select what permissions you want to give to the other users for example the other users can modify the document or they can only view the document so they will have only read only permission but if you select can edit that means the other users with whom you are going to share this document can modify the document as well. This date is expiration date for the link. Let's say you selected anyone and you shared this link of this document with someone and you want that after five days this link should be expired. So you can select the expiration date of the link from here. Next is password. If you set a password while sharing the document and when someone will try to open it, he will be prompted for the password. So you can share the document and you can share the password also so that the user can open this document. And next is block download. This option is available only when you select view permission. If you turn on this option, then people can download your document. So you can restrict the download option from here. So let's say I want to share this document with edit permission. So I will select people you choose. I'll click apply. And here I'll type the email address with whom I want to share this document. So I want to share it with concept at office365concepts.com. So this is the user with whom I'm going to share this document. And I'll select permission, can edit. And if I want, I can add a message or I can simply click send. Now this user will receive a link in his inbox. So let's go to this user's mailbox. So here we can see this user has received an email. So it says John Smith shared a file with you. Here is the document that John Smith shared with you. So this user can either open this document from here or he can click this open option and he can access this document. Now let me show you one more option to share the document. Click on these three dots and go to share. And here click on these three dots and click share in Outlook. This will open Outlook web application and here you can see the link of this document is automatically embedded. So you can simply type the email address of the user with whom you want to share this document. Now let's go back to other users OneDrive account and let's see how does collaboration and co-authoring works in OneDrive. Now here you can see this user has received this document and under shared by it says John Smith. So that means John Smith has shared this file with this user. This user is concept at office365concepts.com and the user who has shared this file is John at office365concepts.com, John Smith. So John Smith has shared this file with concept user and it says shared by John Smith. Under activity, we can see John Smith shared this file with you six minutes ago. Now let's open this document that is shared by John Smith and let's type something here. For example, value three. And let's go back to 
John Smith's OneDrive and let's open the same file. So in this document, we can see concept user is also working. You can see here concept user editing B3, B3. And if I go to concept user OneDrive, you can see John Smith. So John Smith is also working on this file. Let me move this cursor away. And now let's go back. And now you can see John Smith is making some changes in this particular cell. And now if John Smith will make any changes here, and if you go back here, we can see the changes are done. So both users are working simultaneously on the same document. This is called co-authoring. Both users are able to see the changes in real time. This is also a cool feature in OneDrive. The next option is copy link. If you want to share the link of this document with someone, click copy link. You can copy the link from here and you can paste this link in email, compose the email and send it to someone with whom you want to share this document. And that user can open this document using this link. But if you want to manage the permissions, click anyone with the link can add it. And from here you can select the permissions as per your requirement. Next is manage access. Manage access is used to manage the existing permissions. If you have shared a document with someone and you want to stop sharing that document with them or you want to modify the existing permissions, you can manage them from here. So you will select the document and you will click manage access. If you want to share this document with more people, you can click on this icon and you can add more users here and you can also select permission level from here. And if you want to stop sharing the document, then click stop sharing and click stop sharing. Next is delete. In OneDrive for Business, when you delete a file or folder, it is retained in Recycle Bin for 30 days. This value can be changed by the administrators, but by default, this value is 30 days. So let's say if I delete this file, this file will go to Recycle Bin, and you can see the file here. Now this file will be retained here for 30 days. And if I delete this file from Recycle Bin, this document will go to second stage recycle bin. To find second stage recycle bin, you will click on this icon, second stage recycle bin. You can see the file here. Now this file will be retained in second stage recycle bin for 63 days. And after 63 days, this file will be purged. So that means if you delete a document in OneDrive, by default, it is retained for 93 days. Now, if I want to restore this file from here, I'll select the file, and I'll click restore. And now this file will be restored to the same location from where this file was deleted. Apart from this, you can restore your entire OneDrive account to a particular date. Like you restore operating system to a particular date. Same way you can restore your OneDrive for last 30 days. Click on the gear icon at the top right and click restore your OneDrive. From here, you can select to which date you want to restore your OneDrive. For example, yesterday, one week ago, three weeks ago, or you can select custom date and time for one month. And if you scroll down, you can select a particular date and time from here as well. And if you select, for example, this date, your OneDrive account will be restored to this date and all other activities done after this date will be removed. If you want to add a document in favorites, you will select the document and you can click favorite and this document will be added in your favorites. If you go to favorites, you can see the file here. And if I want to remove it from here, you can simply click unfavorite and this file will be removed from favorites. You can also download a file, folder or a document to your machine. You can rename a document. You can move the folder or the file to a different folder to a different location. You can copy the file and you can paste it somewhere else. You can use Power Automate to automate your OneDrive documents. You can also check version history of your document and you can see the details of your documents as well. If you found this video informative, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel. And if you have questions or suggestions, feel free to write them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.